Welcome to Blue Collar Elk Hunting, brought to you by ElkGrows.com, with your host and elk hunting coach, Joe Gillick. You want to hunt elk? They live to hunt elk. Their goal is to share with you what they have learned grinding it out for over 35 seasons, doing what they love. So come on into camp and set a spell. Welcome to Blue Collar Elk Hunters. Welcome, everybody. I'm Joe Gillia, and this is your Insights Edition of the Blue Collar Elk Hunting Podcast, where we want to talk and learn about all things elk. On today's edition, we have a special guest, Jeffrey Duvall from the Western Hunt Fest. Look, y'all, as bow hunters, elk hunters, 3D shooters, this is an incredible event that was created with the elk hunter in mind and the preparation that it takes to be ready for the season. It is such an incredible event, and we're excited not only to talk about it today, but we're going to take part of in it as well. So here today to help talk about this and all the things that went into it, where it came from, how it came about, where it's going, Jeffrey Duvall, man. How you doing, bud? I'm good. How are you? Good. Well, how, how'd I do on the intro, man? Did I nail any of it? Or It was, it was lovely. I love it. <laughs> yeah, good job. <laughs> Thank you. Man. Uh, you were made for this kind of stuff. <laughs> well, I don't know about that. <laughs> so what we're going to do is I kind of gave an intro. We're going to talk about Western Hunt Fest, but we want to talk a, a little bit, let people know who you are. Um, okay. And then we'll kind of talk about, and your partner in crime is not here. Uh, yeah. Evan's not here. Um, we'll even talk about him a little bit, how this came about and the driving forces behind it. So give us that 10,000 foot view, bud. Yeah. So uh, the Western Hunt Fest, first of all, is like a 3D archery tournament with hunting assignments attached to each and every shot. Um, we will have two courses this year, um, two 20, 20 target courses. And they uh, one course will run on Saturday, the young other course will run on Sunday. Um, attached with the Western Hunt Fest, we have an elk culling contest, an elk culling seminar, and the uh, everybody's favorite, the elk pack out challenge. The pack out challenge, yeah. And so, yeah, we're going to yeah. be hitting that uh, in a few minutes. In fact, probably, would you say the pack out challenge was really one of the driving forces with this, or or no? For sure, yeah, for sure. The uh, the pack out challenge is everybody's favorite first off, and it was uh, our favorite going into this. Um, we love the 3D archery tournaments, but we just wanted more out of them. So uh, we decided to start our own. Yeah. So yeah. What, what I see with a lot of things, okay, so like, you know, you take 3D shoots, you take elk calling competitions, um you know, you can do endurance type things as well. Um, there's a lot of that. I've seen a lot of like CrossFit type stuff blend in with 3D tournaments. Um, yeah. You know, you, you have things like that. Um, but what I find with a lot of events and not all of them, there's some incredible events out there. We have another one coming to New Mexico beside y'all as well. But yeah. there's a lot of really cool things. And really, I think as long, for me, as long as people are shooting, that's a great, great thing. But when I think about events like this, most of them are about more about uh, people competition. It's not really what I would say preparing you for real life scenarios in the actual elk woods, you know. Um, yeah. Calling competitions have basically become things where we're pretty much calling, you know, we're calling humans. We're trying to, you know, convince human that we are a better elk than somebody else instead of doing things that we're actually going to take into the woods when we're there. And uh, you're, you know, you, everybody walks to a 3D, they go up to a pin, they're nice and relaxed, they get to pull back and shoot. Whereas that situation is not like that in the woods right <laughs> it's not at all not at all you know yeah. everything but 
Um, there's so many different things. A lot of times, either you've been hauling up a hill, trying to get to a spot or get into a different area. Um, you've got an animal that's coming in on you the first time you've seen one in five days and the heart is going crazy. You're, you're finding yourself having to, you know, sometimes be an acrobat around trees on the ground, different things to be able to get the shot that you want. And it's never, ever, hardly ever, unless you get a prime situation, a perfectly clean look all the time. You have to develop your spots. You have to find your windows. You have to do different things that a lot of people just aren't prepared for. Um, and you guys changed that. And first of all, in your 3D shoot, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so we uh, that's one of our big focuses with the Western Hunt Fest. Mm -hmm. We did not want just a 3D shoot. We wanted to add those scenarios into it. Um, because let's be honest, out of probably the, I don't know, 20, 30 shot opportunities I've had over the last, you know, 10 years, none of them have been perfect. Not one. So we're just uh, trying to build on that, you know, uh, have people train for those scenarios along with their traditional shooting and, you know, dialing everything in. Because there is a time and place for just the, the clean, open shot, you know. Right. There's a time and place for that, but there, there needs to be a time in your training when you're preparing for, for more. So we're going to come back to this because, yeah. I, you know, I avoided or let you avoid telling us about yourself and about Efren, man. Oh yeah. 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 So, um, so me first, I am, uh, born and raised in Colorado. Um, I grew up hunting. I mean, since the time I, I can walk, I had been hunting. My family are all big hunters. Um, they, uh, they're all rifle hunters. They uh, take in pack mules. They pack in their camps. They do it big. Um, but uh, I transitioned into bow hunting because of Efren in 2013, I believe. And ever since then, man, I've just been even more hooked than I was before, you know. <laughs> it's um, an addiction, right? Oh, it's an addiction, big time, yeah. Um, but yeah, so um, let me go into Efren real quick. Okay. So Efren, um, he was born in Albuquerque, New Mexico, mm -hmm. um, and then he was uh, raised in Albuquerque and Phoenix. Um, when he was in Phoenix, he started the company Pack Em Out, which both of us have the shirts on for it. Um, and when Efren started Pack Em Out, I started working for him. Um, him and I just kind of we went out, we had fun with it, and you know, it's it brought us quite a few connections. So he's which, in Phoenix and Albuquerque and you're up in Colorado. How'd you meet? So uh, we married wives. Oh. I mean, sisters. Our wives are sisters. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that sounded weird. Yeah. You guys are really close. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So we, uh, so funny enough, I was living in Denver. I met my wife. Um, the, either the first or second time I ever hung out with her was actually at, um, like in person. Uh-huh was at their wedding so i went to felicia and efren's wedding and uh and then i decided you know that my wife was the one so then i moved to phoenix and for like my first six months to a year i didn't have any friends i didn't do much um i had looked at the regulations in arizona over and over and over and man i felt stupid every time i pulled them up i couldn't figure <laughs> out their system like it was a mess well i went to a birthday party at efren's house and uh, I knew he was a hunter because my wife would talk about it and um, and stuff. So him and I got to talk and hunting, and that was it, man. <laughs> I oh, bought wow. a bow, uh, and we just we went for it. You know, we uh, we spent probably three years hunting deer down in Arizona, which is way harder than here, uh -huh. and we could not kill a deer. And then finally, we figured it out. And then. So were you chasing muleys? Were you chasing coos? What were you chasing? Coos deer. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So yeah. the great ghost, you were out, you were out trying to get one. Yeah. And yeah. you know, both of us were uh as when we when we were younger and up until this point, both of us were very successful hunters. So we both, you know, we knew we would figure it out, but it took a while. And then uh, the girls would always say, Oh, they're they're not hunting, they're doing this, joking <laughs> around. And then my father in law is like, When are you guys gonna actually kill? Like <laughs> you know, just a lot of fun with it, but, but both of us have that same type of personality where we're going to go until we figure it out, you know? Right. So, right. so we fi figured it out and then that was a wrap. 
but yeah, so uh, back to the pack them out thing, like um, pack them out started, we started doing the booths at different places and it's just been a huge blessing in our lives. And, you know, um, uh, for our kids, like it gets them involved in the woods. It gets the whole family involved. And um, it's really cool to walk around and see people wearing pack them out shirts. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. you know, like, like when, when I go to Shields and I see people, I'll be uh, talking to them at the archery counter and I'll have, I, it's happened multiple times where I'm standing there and people will walk up and say, Hey, where's the pack them out clothes. And I'm like, yes <laughs> so it's, it's really cool you know yeah but yeah yeah it's uh but because of pack em out we met a lot of connections and we had uh been attending a lot of events right and with because the events, really it's just, it was just a clothing brand right for an outdoor absolutely brand, right? yeah just lifestyle brand yep yeah so that got us uh more heavily involved uh we already were involved in going to all these things but it just had us there on the ground, you know, participating with it. So we, uh, just the whole time we were there, we were, we would always talk like, man, we should do a pack out challenge or, Hey, we should do like a youth shoot. Hey, we should do something. So we brainstormed it probably a couple years. Uh, and then, um, we just really started fine tuning it. And then, you know, out of nowhere, we just decided let's do it. And this is what we're going to do. We're going to do the pack out challenge, we're going to do the 3D archery and we're going to do the elk calling contest. Um, and yeah, we, we planned it, we did it. And our first one was a huge success. So, yeah. So I got to meet you guys for the first time in at um, Purgatory uh, over there near Durango at the uh, Mountain Archery Fest. First time I got a chance to meet you guys and, um, yeah. you know, didn't know all the background story yet. Uh, knew that you guys were great friends, didn't know that you were brother-in-laws. That's kind of like me and Chav. It's just the same thing. You know, Chav and I. Oh, really? oh yeah. We're married to sisters. <laughs> oh, no way. That is awesome. Yeah. I did not know so, that. Yeah. So, it, and, and it's great because when you're, when you're married to sisters, um, you guys have, you, you have a lot in common. Plus, oh, yeah. uh, you're going to be spending a lot of time together anyway. And you can kind of complain to each other about the, you know, bad, you can really talk and enjoy the good, you know, all those different things. Yeah. Um, and when you click, when you're hunting buddies, it's, it's really great because the sisters have each other, you know, if they don't go with us, if, and my wife, there's, you know, elk hunting has the two things that she hates the most. That's early mornings and cold. So <laughs> <laughs> she's, uh... she's, she's not a fan. They like to go camping and stuff like that, but you know, they're not a fan of the whole hunting thing. Love to eat elk, but, yeah. um, just not in the hunting part but what was so cool was when we met you guys is you guys already have your own crowd because of all the kids the families there yeah. um and you're going to know that there's elk hunters there because i mean screams and bugles and grunts and chirps everything's yeah. coming from that booth man it's uh, oh, yeah. it's really cool to see you guys and your kids and that is also you know something we're going to come back to that's a big part of the western hunt fest as well because you guys are bringing up the next generation in fact i think i remember efren saying at one point in time that the pack em out challenge was really to kind of get his kids, I mean, not pack them out challenge, but pack them out, right? Was oh, yeah. yep. pretty much about to get their kids involved in both business and outdoors and all y'all being together, right? For sure, yeah. And it, and it's done just that too. Like it's really brought us all together. The kids, they love it, man. They The kids go shed hunting. They uh, love the fishing. They love hunting, like all of it, you know, you know, my kids, they love the elk calling. It's yep. like, it's just a, it's a way of life for us now. And it's really cool. Yeah. And I, I will say pack them out has done that for us, you know, uh, that's awesome. And I, yeah. I really felt bad for guy. I think guy was in between us, <laughs> you know, yeah, poor guy between our booth and your booth on each side. It was, uh, it was, it could be pretty loud. You know, I did, um, an expo, um, in February in Albuquerque and I don't think those people are used to people just going crazy on elk calls all the time. You know, they're kind of like, man, is that dude ever going to shut up? You know, <laughs> right, right. it ain't happening. No, nope. no, it's not. No, nope. it's not happening. Okay. So, um, I, I want to make sure that, um, people understand really 
now we know where it kind of came from and where it's developing. And last year was your first year, correct? It was, yep. Mm -hmm. And yep. I was at it in Bailey. That was the, did you do one event, two events? Just one, yep. We did one single event, one day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is huge growth for you guys this year. Oh, yeah, yep. And you're going to have two events. And, well, I'm super excited because one event is about 20 minutes from my house at the Whittington Center. If people don't know what the Whittington Center is, um, it's NRA-affiliated, incredible, um, right, it, I mean, all of the different ranges that they have as far as um, firearms go is incredible. Plus, they have all the 3D archery out there. We have They have incredible facilities to stay in. They have a museum. It's just a, and it's on a beautiful location. Absolutely. Yeah, they have air rifle ranges for the kids. They have the skeet, the three gun, everything. Like the place is amazing. And the prices of the facilities to the like the accommodations are so cheap. It's crazy. And when I you was say cheap, blown away. Us that, that's relative. So what how Yeah, yeah. So um for a competitor housing room, I believe it's seventy five dollars a night. Wow. Which wow. is unheard of because it's right. super, super nice. I mean like Joe said, you're in like the prettiest place. It is gorgeous. I'm by antelope. You see in deer. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Elk. elk. There, we, the last time we were there, we probably saw 250 to 300 head of elk yep. just right yep. there. Mm -hmm. um, big old mule deer. We saw a bunch of antelope. It's it's a neat place. Yeah, it is. Now it's not like it's not like your typical um, Bailey, Colorado, where you have your other event. You know, that's yeah, all no. the big pines and trees and hills. It's uh it's a lot more open, the pinon pines, the the junipers yep. and stuff like that. Plus you're kind of meeting right at the hills. It's at the base of the hills where it meets the plains, right? Yep, for sure. Yeah, yeah it's cool. it's gorgeous. I, I love it. Like I love the pinon juniper country. So for me it feels like home. You know, I grew up I think about twenty minute drive from right there. Um, so yeah, it's for me. I, it's one so of the prettiest. Did you up in Trinidad? I did. Yep. Yeah. Oh, very cool. Yeah. What school did you go to in Trinidad, man? Trinidad High School. You went to high school. Oh, cool. Hey, yep. Yep. I was I was uh, one of the high school minors. Yeah, Bagano. Mm hmm. Yep. Good. Bagano friend. was my my uh, football coach, my wrestling coach. Track coach. Yeah. 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 Great yeah. guy, man. Um. So, the thing that I want, you know. When people hear, okay, we're talking about a 3D shoot, I I really want to get people to understand a few things of importance. Not only how what you guys are doing is different, but how important an event like this or any 3D shoot is, especially at this time of year. And, you know, the first of all, as soon as you sign up for a 3D shoot, pressure's on, yep. you know, so you're not just going to go on the day of the shoot and go pull your bow out and go start shooting that. That's, that's not going to happen. So immediately once you sign up, there's something in the back of your head or preparation. You have that timeline that's happening. You start getting behind your bow, you start shooting, um, you start, you know, pulling your other gear out that you're using and things like that. Uh, and it, it immediately is a plus for any 3D shoot, right? For sure. Um, and for you guys, what you guys have done is the goal of Western Hunt Fest is to help others develop confidence, confidence through preparation. Um, I would say, and I want to make sure, because that's a big part of what you do, to provide that family atmosphere that helps grow that next generation. You guys, it's so important for you to have events for kids, right? And Absolutely. you're trying to get a lot of kids at that event. You want it to be a family thing. And, you know, mm -hmm. I think for so many people, that's a huge, huge plus, right? So we have yeah. that. It, it's that to develop confidence and, and understand something. People ask me, they're like, Joe, how have you been so successful? You know, because this will be my 41st season and in, in New Mexico, you know, I've only ever, except for once, I hunted Colorado. We went there one time. This coming year, I'm going to Canada, which is like my bucket list. Don't um, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, up until that, every season has always been in New Mexico. We're only allowed 
one tag. Um, I'm a, I was also a full-time guide, uh, not a full-time guide. I was a teacher coach and I was guiding as well. So I usually got about five days, seven days max to be able to have my own hunt. And as a teacher coach, it was critical to have food in the freezer, elk in the freezer. And my goal every year, ever since my wife and I met each other, you know, being a poor college student was to ensure that I was putting food in the freezer. So um, I was, uh, I've in the last 40 seasons hunting state land, I've taken 37 elk with my bow. And that's amazing. And, and, you know, people say that, and I never really thought about it, Jeffrey, because for me, it was like, I'm taking money and time away from my family. I need to bring something back. And I mean, I worked my butt off. Plus mm -hmm. I had a solid skill set and the skill set was because I wanted to fill the freezer. It was when you're hungry, you work harder. <laughs> yeah, oh, for sure. For sure. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, um, yeah. So when people ask me how I've been so successful with that, I really tell them there is not a day that I don't put the bow in my hands. When I feel that grip and I start walking in the woods, there's not a day that I don't feel that I can't kill an elk, right? I have yeah. that kind of confidence. For and sure. And I really think that an event like this is not only going to help promote that confidence, it's going to help develop that confidence. And it's also, when I say awareness is the other one, Jeff, because the Pack Out Challenge, tell, tell everybody about the Pack Out Challenge, which is kind of you guys' flagship. It's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. So the pack out challenge is a simulated elk. So we use the average weights of a bull elk and we fill sandbags to um, mock like we do uh, two rears, which weigh 65 pounds each. We do two front quarters, which are 45 pounds each. And then we do 10 um, bags or 10 pound bags. We do four 10, 10 pound bags to uh, simulate like the uh, back straps, the neck meat, the rib meat. And then we have them carry their uh, their bow on one trip at least, and then a Euro mount. So we're, uh, we have them go up and down, up and down. We have a, a little track that loops from the start to the finish. And we're just trying to prepare people for every situation. So along our tracks, we try to put multiple, um, we use different terrain. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, we have like, you have to step over logs in one spot. Um, this year we added a little fence piece that you have to go over or under, um, With the britches. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. So we, we just add little elements to it. Uh -huh. Um, softer side Hill. We're just adding like pieces to it. So you understand like when you are packing something out, like what works for you, what your uh, practicality of where you're hunting is. Mm -hmm. Like if, if you're hunting five miles back and you can't complete our pack out challenge, you should probably revisit where you're hunting, you know, right. um, or just train more and get your body in shape, get a better pack. You know, um, this is for testing you, but also testing your gear too, you know? Right. So like um, when you're out there doing it, of course, uh, in September, when you kill an elk, sometimes it's hot Yep. and yep. you have to do it for speed um so this kind of prepares you you know to for time management everything the whole the whole uh thing here is uh preparing people for when they do kill an elk with the with the pack out challenge um but it's a it's a timed race so it's basically a race it's a timed race everybody loads up their packs and they run it and the best time of the day wins um we what's do give distance? out what's the distance uh, I, I think it's 1.6 at the whittington so you have to get all of elk from point A all the way around to point B over a 1.6 course, however many yep. times it takes you to do that, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. So so let me just make sure. So if I go all the way around 1.6 with a load, yep. I have to go back to 1.6 for the second load? Nope, nope. So it's a loop. So okay. we're... Uh... And the reason we do it this way is just for time management because right. of the event, because of how many, yep, it would take too long if we did it that way. We would love to have it three miles and, and you know, have have them go back and forth, but for time purposes and just okay. just for fun so we don't burn it out either. Yeah. We yeah. have 
we have it in a loop. So you start at A and you finish at A and then you loop back and it's just okay. a big loop. This year, um, we put it to where the, the uh, crowd can watch the pack out challenge. Uh -huh. So from the vendor area, you can see them in spots and we pop them out in strategic spots uh -huh. so that we can watch them throughout the whole uh, pack out challenge. And yeah, then uh, we ought to get uh, some names of these guys, man, and get a loudspeaker where we can actually do a little play by play. <laughs> that, would, that would be awesome. So we do actually we are going to have um, some cellular game cameras uh -huh. on the course and we're going to have a monitor set up to where people can see them check in at the checkpoints. Yep. And then um, Joel That's from. Awesome. Yeah, Joel and them guys from uh, High Harvest, uh -huh. they have monitors on them and they're going to be tracking them throughout the, the course. And they're going to be doing like O2 sat levels and heart rates and just um, like maximum output and all, all this jazz, all this uh, geeky stuff on it. Very so it's going to be really, really cool. And then um, this year we actually added a woman's pack out challenge. So it's going to be um, a mule deer, the average mule deer. And I believe the weight on the total weight on the mule deer, I think it comes out to 180. So it's not very much. Um, the elk, I believe, is 280, but I'll have to double check the uh, the notes on that. But, but yeah, so we added that, and then there's also a solo and a team. Um, this year our sponsor for the Packout Challenge is Kafaru International. So uh, our team trophies are these really cool rhino heads. Oh, cool! Uh, so yeah, they're super neat. And then uh, I'm sure everybody listening to this has seen the uh, the belt by now. The, if uh, they so we'll have not seen the belt, um, I'll, I'll post a picture here. Um, yeah. This is me wearing it. It looks like a WWF, uh, yeah. you know, uh, championship belt. Really, really big that you get to wear across there. It's it. It's that's really cool, man. I just the whole thing about you know, um, top dog winning it and showing it off is pretty cool. Yeah. It's yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, and it's it and um uh, with the education part of it too, you meet all these awesome people at these events. And this goes for Mountain Archery Fest, TAC, any of them. Any of these events you go to, you meet your brothers. You know, you meet guys with a similar interest, guys who have the same drive as you, and guys that are just in a different part of their walk of the hunt. So you get to build fellowship with them and, you know, just uh, create lifelong friends. Like, since we started uh, going into the hunting right. uh, competitions, man, I've met so many friends that text me and send me pictures and all this jazz, so... That part of it is like underestimated. You know, you'll meet lifelong buddies at this thing. It's a great community. It really for is. For sure. For it's sure. Cool people. And there's a lot of, you know, we don't all think the same, but we all have a lot of the same process and how we feel about a lot of things. And the rest of it, it makes for great conversation. And, and it's, it's the way that people can grow and stuff. So I think that's really cool. Now, you said like um, the elk. 280 is uh that's that's actually i i'm wondering if it is too that that would be with the head because that's actually that's a pretty legit animal right there you know yeah you talk about 280 and a lot of times you know that's going to be pretty much when you're packing all the meat out and so it's going to be right about there uh 250 depending on the size of the bull and there's mm -hmm. so many things that you have to deal with and what i love about this event is not only are you testing your ability to do it, but it also gives you, we talk about awareness, right? It makes you think about, dude, man, if I had that struggle for a mile and a half, not having to go back again and get it, what's it going to be like at three miles? What's going to be like at four miles, right? So it actually helps you put limitations on yourself to keep you from getting in trouble out there. Yep. Or, or it makes you realize, okay, I can do, I can do a three mile pack out possibly or a two mile pack out or i had better keep it within this kind of range right yeah. temperature matters too you know absolutely the timing of this event is almost perfect though because it's going to be april 29th so we should see a lot of the temperatures that we'll see in september yep. so it should be pretty close to the same temperatures hopefully yeah, you almost have that um, because you have the that spring weather that's hitting where it's a little cooler but gets a little bit hotter before it gets yeah. to be August, you know, July, August. And then yep. it starts to do the same thing in September unless yep. it pushes off. So it's just kind of like the opposite spectrum. So you're absolutely right about that. I think yeah. – and, and I want to emphasize that this is both can be an individual event 
or a team event, you know, as far as how you do it. And which to me, a lot of this, if you're a solo hunter, events like this are critical for a lot of reasons. You, you know, you guys are doing the pack out challenge. You're doing the calling competition and, um, and you're having seminars. Uh, I'm, I get to actually do the seminar there. Uh, yes, sir. One of the seminars, I'll be in Bailey as well to do a seminar. They're excited about that. But my whole goal is when I talk about the animals that I've taken over the years, nobody has ever called an elk in for me. You know, um, I've That's had awesome. uh, Gilbert with me and Chad with me when I called a group in and Gilbert helped stop one after after a first shot uh, and gave me a second shot. At, but I've always been a solo caller. And, you know, when you have a partner and your partner calling, which is a different deal, um, there's strategies to that and how you guys work together. And as a solo hunter, there's things where you're a little bit handicapped if you don't, don't know how to work it or don't know any strategies to get that animal to come by you. There's, you know, everybody talks about the hang up out there at 80 yards and stuff like that. So I try to teach people how to get beyond that. And I try to teach people because right now there is a, basically they say that there's a 10% success rate across the United States. Bow hunting elk. Well, I, I would challenge that to say 5% because I think um, most of those people that are being successful are the same people every year. Oh yeah. So, uh, and I think a reason, a big reason for that lack of success is that it's the same old rodeo, everybody doing the same thing out there. It's definitely be, not because we don't have the greatest and latest equipment and gear. Um, it's got to be strategies and techniques. So that's some of the things that we try to teach. So th that in itself is one of those big pluses when you go there. The calling competition. Now, tell us about your calling competition on that is is there any differences or is it just like the rest of them or yeah so no the the differences in our calling contest is is going to be our judges so our judges are going to listen to um not only the sounds but they're also going to judge you on how well you know the vocalizations um so they're going to judge you on like whether or not you know what you're saying so that is um almost more important with our calling contest than the actual sounds Mm -hmm. um is does this guy know what he's saying does this guy know um what he needs to be doing in this scenario so, so um is it going to be are there scenarios that they have to produce so we're going to we're going to do a freestyle and on their freestyle we're going to be judging their scenario okay yeah, so we're going to yeah and then we have a, a all-star panel of judges again <laughs> um so i'm excited for that and uh the recommendation that you gave me yesterday is a plus <laughs> good so, good deal yep That's so awesome. we we got an all-star crew of judges again um but yeah our calling contest is um we're gonna have a youth and an adult calling contest and then the uh it's gonna sound like mid-september at the event so get ready for it because <laughs> joe's there i'm there and my kids are there so uh yeah. there's gonna be a lot of screaming going on man and the and oh, yeah. your kids are incredible I mean, Thank you. they call so well. They're uh, um, they've been involved in competitions. They were in the competition that we held last year. Um, yep. So, you know, for people, so that they're you know, and I see it a lot of times that people get intimidated when it comes to calling competitions. Here's what I would tell you: or they get intimidated with a 3D shoot, or they get intimidated with a pack mount challenge. What I would tell you is none of this is for anybody else other than you. You know, by going and getting in these type of events, you put a special kind of pressure on yourself. Unless you've been out with a bull elk that is hanging up, but he's right there at 40 yards, and you're trying to pop out a soft cow call to the behind you um, without squeaking that puppy and making it go, oh, hell yeah, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, that is the difference between mm -hmm. you having an opportunity with that bull and him turning and going, now nah, I'm out of here, right? So- yep. By getting in situations where you have that pressure, where you got to do that call, where you have to maybe even cover, you know, I, I do it all the time in the woods. You know, I go and throw something out that I didn't like the way it sounded, and I don't quit with it. I follow with something else immediately that uh, the show must go on. It hides it, and it just continues out and makes everything seem more natural. So. For sure. 
doing those kinds of things and then get them that pack them out challenge. You go, well, I don't want to die out there. Hmm. Well, then maybe that's something you ought to think about, man, and preparing for right. because if you are planning on success in September, you had better be planning on being able to get an elk out of the mountains, right? For sure. So yeah. this is this is a super, super thing for them to be able to do. And we haven't even brought in the novelty shoots yet. Yeah. Yeah, that's going to be a, another fun part. With the uh, calling contest, the closest pressure you're going to find to actually calling to a bull in the woods is calling in front of a group of people like absolutely it's hard it's hard to get out there and call in front of a group of people um my first time doing it dude i couldn't even look up i was like oh i'm gonna be an idiot like <laughs> and honestly i didn't know how, how i would do i did my first uh calling contest i did was in estes park uh -huh. and there were like tons of callers and I, I think I was like fifth in line and like all five guys before me sounded awesome. And I'm like, Oh, I, this is it. I, I why am I even going out there? Right. But I knew I want to practice. I want to see how, how well it goes, you know? So I did it and I won and I was, sh I was shocked. I didn't realize that I sounded that good, you know? Uh -huh. And after winning I've it, I've heard you, man, you don't. Uh, all right. <laughs> yeah. For a local level. <laughs> no, but, uh, after winning it, then it sprung up this confidence in me. Like, yeah. oh, like people think I sound good. I must sound good. And I know you shouldn't like uh, rely on people's approval. Right. But if that's what it takes to get you to the next level, it, it's very, very helpful. Yeah. And then the second time I did it, I wasn't even nervous. I'm like, okay, cool. I already did it. I know what I'm doing. And then boom. Now when I go in the woods, I am not afraid to throw a sound. Like. Right. Like when I, when I feel it's time to throw a sound, I throw a sound. I if I mess sound, it up like you, I cover. I think you sound awesome, man. And um, I think what's, what's good about these though. And, and like when you're talking about the freestyle, sometimes I even like to have those where somebody would draw a card and say, okay, so this is going to be a, you know, uh, a cow base scenario, or it's going to be a breeding sequence, or it's going to be an advertising bull, or it's going to be two bulls, you know, I, um, or it's going to be, um, um, a bull that's, um, uh, a young bull that's not wanting to come into a herd. There's so many different scenarios and people don't know that they don't, like you said, they don't understand the language. They don't understand the behaviors. They just know that I can scream a bugle or I can do a cow call. And they don't understand the nuances to that because very seldom do I ever take a competition screaming bugle and take it to the woods, right? Yeah. <laughs> very seldom. Now there's a time and a place for it, depending on what that other animal does, but that's just a tool in my toolbox. So yep. yeah, I, I think it's so important to get there and to try these things and to learn and to talk to new people and, and listen to some of the things. You can get so many great nuggets from so many people that aren't Joe Gillia on a podcast, right? They're not Jeffrey right. running an event. These are guys out in the woods as well doing it. And they have their own little tips and their own little secrets, especially for the areas that they hunt. So it is a great networking. It's a great learning experience. I, I just can't say enough about it. And the people that I've met at the vendors, you know, yeah. that have been there, oh, yeah. you know, Ar Armando and the bow hitch are, I mean, yeah. just incredible folks, you know, um, yeah. I knew Guy Duplanche before I ever met him at an event, but, you know, it's like a, a brother from another mother and For just sure. meeting him there and just incredible people there, you know, um, yeah. and it's that initial ascent. All these people are just incredible, yep. incredible folks. I mean, you guys were okay. I mean, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were right. kind of loud. <laughs> uh. It was, it was a great thing. Um, so the, the, the one thing, We've talked about the pack amount. We've talked about um, the elk calling. Um, we know there's going to be seminars. But when you talked about the situations on some of your shoots, let's talk yeah. about the 3D shoot itself. Yeah, so the uh, the 3D shoot is, uh, first off, it's sponsored by Onyx. On, so, like, that's it, we were very fortunate to have them as a sponsor. Um, with the 3D shoot, or with the, uh, the sign-up of the competition, Everybody's going to get a, a free three-month uh, subscription to Onyx um, Elite. 
Wow. So they're going to get a, a three month membership. Uh, we'll have the courses uploaded on Onyx so they can follow the course on, on their Onyx. So if they download it and they uh, download the offline maps, they can just, you know, follow the Onyx pins to the, to each and every pin. If, if they, if for some reason it doesn't work, we will have them flagged out and everything, but, but yeah, so um, each shot is going to have a hunting scenario attached to it. So um, give us one. So I'm going to give you one called the, let's go with the Gusto. So the Gusto is a, it's a hundred plus yard shot. Um, this shot is, everybody requested the long bomb. We wanted to focus in on like real life hunting shots. Mm -hmm. So we weren't going to do a long bomb initially, but we did a video when we were setting up the courses and everybody's like, what about a long shot? What about a long shot? So we, uh, we flipped the script and we added one in there um, with our long shot. We have added it as a follow-up shot. So in the scenario, you have already shot the bull, the bull's running off and now he's turned broadside at a hundred yards. You're then going to let it fly and right. send your shot. So um, that's one of them. That one's kind of boring though. It's just a long shot. Yeah. But, but um, I don't want you to get away from that that quick because you know, people, when they go, oh, you're taking a long shot, that's not ethical. That's not this. That's not what I want people to understand is once you put an arrow into an animal, any shot, any second arrow at any distance that you can attempt Anywhere. to make that happen. Yeah. yeah is yeah. Uh, now, are, are there some situations where you can tell that maybe I don't want to stick something in and get it, you know, poke, I don't want to poke the horse in the rear? Yeah, there's absolutely that. But if it's something where you don't know where your shot hit or you don't know exactly what your placement is and that animal stops you have an opportunity, could it be a bad hit? Well, you want another arrow in to yep. try to dispatch that animal as quick as possible and to especially help you out with the blood trail, all the absolutely. above on that. So you know, um, as a professional guide, I teach people, as soon as you shoot an animal, you should have another arrow knocked and ready. There is no celebration. Sure. We've got a job to do. And our job is to yeah. put that animal down as quick as possible. Right. So yeah. I, I don't want people to just go by the thought of the importance of that 100, because I had the exact thing happen. Gilbert, um, when Gilbert was, um, I was actually his, his guide at one point in time. Um, we had a situation where I brought a bull in, I think it was about 40 yards. Um, we were in a little place set up. The bull's coming across, and I'm telling him, are you ready? Are you ready? I said, as soon as I bugle, I'm going to scream a bugle. You're going to draw when I bugle. It's going to stop him locking him, and you shoot, which he does, right? Um, it was just a little bit back, and the angle was a little bit weird, and the bull takes and runs and goes out, and, he's, and the bull's out about 90 yards. And we had been practicing because people, it's just like three-point shoots in basketball. People always like to challenge their limits. And we were doing this across the field at camp. And and I was like, dude, can you make that shot? Because I want another one in him, right? And, you know, sure enough, I mean, we're making that attempt at that 90-yard shot. So, um, yeah, so don't just go past that. I want people to understand that is a critical thing to the, to the hunting world. So give yeah. us another one. Yeah, so another one is um, a crawling shot. So we're going to have you crawl from the from one pin to another pin and then shoot from either your butt or your knees. Um, with this shot, you got to be quiet. You, got, you can't pop out too much. Your peers are going to judge you. So you're going to be grouping, shooting with a group of guys, and those guys are going to be watching how you do and they have the ability to give you deductions if they think that you just suck at it. So, <laughs> so keep that in mind. But with that being said, drawing your bow back on your knees or on your on your butt is not as easy as people think. So right. there's there's going to be a lot of challenge to it. You're going to have to crawl. You're going to have to carry and manage your stuff as you're crawling without being too loud. You may take it off and leave it, but you do have to take your necessary items. And you cannot range until you get to the pin. So... So once you get to the pin, then you range, then you dial, then you shoot. So, so that's people what, are able to range at at on the course. Yep, there there is going to be um, one or two shots where they will not be able to use their range finder, and it's going to be an honor system. So okay, uh, okay. I think that's uh, awesome, man. I yeah. mean, again, actual situation. There's times when, and I teach and coach. If you want to avoid failure points, 
from 30 in, you should know it because there's situations that generally when an animal is further out on that, you're going to have more time because of the distance that's in between you and things move a little slower. Once that animal starts coming 30, 20 inside on you, there is no time and there is not a situation. You got to get ready to, I mean, it's the red zone. You got to close it. Right. So you have to be ready for that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Another exciting one that we have is, uh, called buck fever so we we named all the shots too we have clever little names with all of them mm-hmm. but this one's called buck fever and it's you're going to have every guy in your group yelling at you telling you jokes uh, <laughs> messing with you as long as they're not touching you they're going to really try to ruffle your feathers as you're shooting so because awesome. uh, there's no way to there's no way to mock buck fever but distraction helps so we're going to have these guys yelling at you and i even heard through uh through a little birdie of mine, that guy may, may be on that hole just harassing people. So <laughs> the guy from Western Contours might be there harassing everybody, just so you know. Guy's professional harasser, huh? <laughs> yep. So he, he might be there. I don't know. And if it's not guy, it might be somebody else. So um, that shot's really cool, really unique. You and, know, we actually, as a track coach, um, I used to get my team around my throwers and do the exact same thing. You know, um, we used to do it uh, around our kids before exchanges, exact same thing, create as much of a realistic situation as possible and try to test the the nerves. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Just get in, get in their head. Hopefully you have a really funny person in your group or hopefully you don't for your sake, but you know, um, there's a guy out there by the name of Mike Hearn. I may just have him sit at that shot because he is amazing at getting in people's heads. So (laughs) we'll see. Um, (laughs) Yeah, it's it, that one. That one's one of my favorites because I I really love to laugh and really love to to joke around. So that one was, uh, and a lot of these shots are gonna have a lot of laughs in them, you know. So they're not all serious, but they are all seriously helping you, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, another one that we have, um, uh, we're gonna call it sheep legs. So we're gonna have them do lunges from one pin to the shooter's pin and then shoot. And then on there, I added, if your legs aren't wobbly, keep doing squats until you're, till you're done, you know, till, till your legs hurt just to, cause everybody's going to have a different goal in mind and everybody has a different fitness level. So I'm going to keep it on the lower end. But if, if you're a beast and you know that this is not your limit, you keep going, you know, this is for preparation. Are there any mulligans on this course? There's no mulligans, but there's bonus points and there's deductions. Okay. There's a there's a shot called the creeper. You have to wear some sneak tech boots or take your boots off and walk. Uh-huh. And if you're too loud and your group says you're too loud, boom, they deduct points. Um, there's some time limits on. There's a shot where you have to draw and shoot within five seconds. Mm-hmm. So you have to draw, put your pin on it, shoot within five seconds. Every second you go over the five seconds, you lose one archery point. Um, for that target so if you go over 12 seconds and you hit a 12 you get a zero so there's there's a lot of those um the scorecards were kind of tough making because you know we had to add the extra spot for the bonuses oh yeah 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 but it should it should make for a lot of fun absolutely so we've talked about the shoot we've talked about the pack amount we talked about the calling um one thing we haven't said, because we talked about the pack em out competition challenge, but isn't there an overall competition challenge? Yeah, so we're so we're still uh, working in the details, but we uh, we have the trophy ready for it, um, but we we don't have an exact scoring yet. We will have it done by the event, mm-hmm. but we will have an overall New Mexico winner, and we will have an overall Colorado winner. Um, in the years to come, we are going to have. Um, we're going to have our events and then we're going to have a championship. And at that championship, then we're going to crown the champions after they perform a third or fourth time, whatever, whatever it is. I'm just telling you, I'm bringing a beast into this. One of our Elk Bros coaches is coming in to compete. So um, yes. I'm to see old Cole out there, man. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the, the videos of the guys that are, uh, that are working out for this thing. They're crazy, man. These guys are tough. That's cool. I'm just uh, saving all their phone numbers personally. So when I knock down a bull, you know, there you go. Hey, I need you. (laughs) All right. So let's cover the basics before we get out of here. So everybody knows when, so let's, um, let's, let's go over the New Mexico event first. What's the dates of that? April 29th and 30th. Okay. 
And it then, starts in the morning on the 29th at what time? Um, so we're going to be uh, starting our – so we're going to have a little um, – a little meeting at around 7.30 to just discuss the archery rules to get everybody set up, make sure everybody has partners and get everything um, ironed out before the competition. And then the archery competitions start about 8.05. And so, then... So it's probably best for people to be at the event and there's a lot of camping here and there's a lot of actual, like you said, um, um, facilities for people to stay, right? Yep. Yep. So yeah, it's probably best if you get there on Friday. Um, if you get there on Friday, you get to watch the vendors make fools of themselves. So a lot of the vendors that are going to be there, we're going to be having our own little personal competitions the day before, maybe the pack out challenge, maybe just 3d. I don't know. Um, that sounds like fun. Yeah. I, uh, I talk a lot, so I'm sure people are going to make me, uh, run that course. So I'm ready if you, if you want me to do it. Um, but yeah, so one thing we didn't touch on though, we didn't, um, we didn't touch on the kids either. So. Oh, absolutely. Let's let's before we get done with this, let's do that now. Yeah, for sure. So, um, so we really want the Western Hunt Fest to be family friendly. Like, um, going to these shoots and and doing like hunting things, like scouting and everything. It's really hard to to take time away from your family if you are a family man. Um, so we both Efren and I have four kids, or Efren has five. I have four kids. We both have big families, and it's hard for us to get away. So one of our our big parts of Western Hunt Fest is we wanted to make our our families comfortable at these events. So we we're gonna add this year. We're gonna add like certain activities for kids that are all like outdoor based, but we're gonna have activities for your kids. Um, the wives will get to hang out with the uh, the vendors and and have some good food, watch the kids or have shoot, fun, or call, or shoot, yep. or call, yep. or pack, or, yep. Yep, we're going to be teaching the kids how to to elk call. We're going to be teaching them how to cast a fishing pole, how to shoot a trad bow. Um, we have Jerry from MTS Archery. Do you remember him? Yes. The guy that with the flying discs, he'll be there. So that there's a awesome. lot of fun things for the family to do. Um, and, you know, we're, we're going to have a lot of help. So you can, you know, go so he, participate. He, he and, provides you know, a lot of recurve bows, and you guys uh, get the chance to shoot at – at foam discs as they go through the air, they're being shot out. It is so much fun. It's oh, it's, it's so fun. Yeah. You you will bring out your inner child with that. You might not even go run the course if you see that. Yeah, I was like, forget uh, everything else. I just want to stay here and kill that dang thing, man. <laughs> right. I want to finally hit it. Dang it. Uh, yeah. No, but but yeah, so we really want you guys to bring your family. So if you bring your family, we will take care of them. Um, we're gonna have probably stuff for s'mores and just my kids are have big ideas, so we'll have a um a nerf 3d range uh -huh. right there at the novelty range so it's going to be super fun for the kids we may even let them shoot the vendors with nerf guns especially armando <laughs> what's the cost for kids it's free for kids it's free there for you your families unless you're competing the whole event is free um you'll have to of course uh get your room and you'll have to uh get the, the food that's there but but everything else is free um the uh -huh. kids uh calling contest if you win the calling contest, you will win a shoulder mount, which is amazing from um, Major Wildlife Studio. So, so you, once you get your own animal, you you actually have a paid shoulder mount by a taxidermist. Yep, yep, yeah. And then uh, the prize packages for everything are amazing. We have thousands of dollars worth of gear that we're giving out as prize packages. Some gift cards. I believe there might even be some money in some of those. Um, I know there's probably a couple bows floating around there that are going to be given out. And then um, we're also giving away a Texas exotic hunt there. So yeah, we're, there's a we're lot, a lot to gain. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, no, no. There's just a lot to gain there. So yeah, we're even hoping to do a long shot type thing for a bow. So you and I had talked about it and we we'll hope that comes yeah. to fruition. We'd like to see that happen, man. Um, okay. So we got the kids, man. Um, I hope everybody heard that, that these people um, that are putting this together, that run this, that facilitate it, it's about family and they want your kids there. They want you there. Um, wives, if uh, you want your husband to stay there in the vendor booth while you're shooting the thing out there and take it, then 
you come on out there and do it. You know, um, this is uh, this is for women, it's for men, it's for kids, it's for families. So um, this is intended for everybody. So we had when in New Mexico, we had the 29th to 30th. We started like 730 in the morning on Saturday. Um, it ends on Sunday about what time? So it'll end at like 536 p.m. on Sunday. Yeah. And so we'll we'll give give out the trophies and do you have any the prizes type and... things plan on Saturday if for people that stay there? So, yeah. So on Saturday evening, we're gonna have Jerry from MTS. He's gonna have his machine light up. So he, he's gonna have lighted discs. We're gonna put lighted knocks on and we're gonna go to town. We're gonna, you know, shoot that thing at night. Um, we'll probably have a little bonfire going and just um, have people hanging out with each other. And cool. so that, and the one in New Mexico is at the Whittington Center in northern New Mexico. Um, between it's on Highway 64 between Cimarron and Raton um, off there. So uh, the cost of it for competitors. Um, so for competitors, I'm gonna have to look at the prices. Okay. Um, they can sorry. now they can go to Western Hunt Fest. What all one word westernhuntfest.com and get all the information correct for sure yeah yeah um yeah because i i'd be lying if i knew the exact prices um i will say if you haven't signed up yet and you're about to sign up um go ahead and use the promo code peo25 and it'll give you 25 percent off so that is p o as in uh no peo pack them out and then 25 PEO 25 for a 25% discount when you sign yep, up. And, and that'll be for the New Mexico event. So, okay. Yep. So if you guys uh, haven't signed up yet and, and uh, you're about to, and you're listening to this, use that promo code and it'll give you a uh, 25% off. And the awards at this are phenomenal, man. I've never seen such gorgeous awards. You know, they're just, uh, um, yeah. There will be a vendor's village. There'll be a chance for people to purchase, to talk with other people in the industry, to talk with elk hunters, uh, people that uh, that have all kinds of gear and equipment. So that's going to be super. Um, let's just before we get out, what about the Colorado event in Bailey? Yeah, so the Colorado event is going to be June 24th and 25th. Um, it's going to run the same exact format. Um, however, there is not lodging there. Um, but there's in the town of Bailey, um, fair play and all the surrounding areas, there's plenty of, uh, Airbnbs. Um, there's a lot of accommodations that you can find in, in those general areas. There is some camping. It's, it's not real close, but there's some, um, public land dispersed camping yep. in the area as well. So there's also, um, the there's place also is gorgeous. You can pull in campers and stuff that are not very far either. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the area is absolutely gorgeous. The uh, the courses all are already set up um, by Scott. The uh, he's the VP of the or he's I think he's the president of the club. He does a phenomenal job setting up the courses. I know he may tweak a couple things from the four hour event, but um, but Bailey is awesome. The pack out challenge is a little harder at Bailey, um, just because of the elevation and the uh, the steep ground of it, but. But yeah, the facility is awesome. It's these old barns and we get to use the barns for our vendor village. It's it's amazing. So yeah. Um I, I really it, enjoyed the intimacy of it last year. Oh yeah. Yeah. And and it's it's gonna be the same thing, just more organized this year. So awesome. it's gonna be super fun. Yeah, our uh our trophies are are not quite in. I was hoping I would have them for this uh podcast, but they they will be done, I believe, today. So um as soon as i get those trophies i'll send them over to you and i'll i'll let you uh now most blast people them out there you know when i think of trophy i think of like this metal thing with uh, a runner on top or that you know little angel you know it's got you know podiums on each side and it goes up and has a pedestal on the bottom now your trophies aren't like that though are they oh no no, no. so our our elk calling trophy is a big statue of an elk yep. um it's a big bronze statue and he's doing the the bugle uh uh pose and then our um uh, our pack out solo winners so the women's belt will be white the men's belt will be black mm -hmm. and then the team pack out will have the rhinos and then the kids elk calling uh contest is a big fat metal that goes on their chest and it's going to be bigger <laughs> than, than them um awesome. and then what else do we got we uh yeah and then we have some big cups 
like super big cups. And, and you just guys have so, usually draw, drawing at the end as well for um, mm -hmm. stuff that the vendors donate, right? Yeah, so so we have all of our vendors donate at least uh, one prize. So all the vendors donate a prize, and then we uh, reach out to all the companies that we love, and we just ask them to send stuff. So uh, they've sent us, I mean, a ridiculous my, – dude, my living room is just <laughs> stacked with things. Um, and my wife is getting super annoyed by it, so uh, – this can't come soon enough, but yeah. So at the end of the, uh, the event, we, throughout the event, we hand out raffle tickets. And at the end of the event, we call a number, they walk up, they pick up a, uh, an assigned gift. It is really cool. Um, like I said, it's thousands of dollars of stuff. Uh, we're about to go on a shopping spree this weekend, um, to go pick up the rest of the, the prizes. And, uh, this year, I've been eyeballing those boxes. Like, man, I don't know. I don't even have that stuff. Like, I know, right? Just look at it. <laughs> uh, so it's it's super cool. Um, we're super blessed with the companies that have uh, jumped on board with this thing. Like, um, a lot of our vendors are just amazing, and you guys are gonna love them. Yeah, it's it's literally a family. Like, like the first time I met you, it was it was literally like family. The first time I met Armando, guy, all of you guys. Um, like even Brandon from. Uh, from um mount no, archery I, fest like yeah we're we're somewhat competitors you know but I, I just love the guy like he's uh you know he's gives me pointers just everybody in the industry is wonderful you know i he gets it um i i've seen people that think of these events as being competitors but i think you can't have enough of these events and sure. if you're educating people to help them be better in the outdoors it's a win-win-win so yeah. brandon gets it like that his uh He's all about education. He's all mm -hmm. about um, uh, people becoming better. He's about families and kids. And, you know, he has that same aura that yep. you guys have. And um, I think that's one thing that, you know, reasons why people like myself and the other guys, Tom and everybody, the guy that have been there, want to see you guys succeed because this is the kind of thing that people need. This is the kind of thing that promotes the right ideas. This is not about... You know, it's not about flexing muscles because I do this and I do that. It's legit type stuff that you get to test yourself against the elements, find out something about yourself, become self-aware, and have a good time. Have a great time and be prepared. It's going to get you ready so that you are that much better when you hit the woods, okay? So um, For sure. super, super thing. Anything you'd like to say before we close out, Jeffrey? Um, I would like to show everybody one thing real quick. All right, sure. So... This competition, it okay. So we have the trophy, and we only give it to first place, right? Right. But it is truly a competition against yourself. So uh, I'm currently working on making little stickers. These are for yourself. These are uh, little stickers that said, "I survived the." Uh, hold on, it's blurry. I survived the pack out challenge. There you so I'm going to make li little, uh, little stickers, little things to just have fun with it. Um, once you complete the pack out challenge, Joel is going to uh, run your numbers. They're going to make a workout plan for you guys. They're going to do like, they're going to help you guys. So if you do both events, you get a, a first uh, report card. And then on the second one, you get a second report card. And then in the Elkwoods, you get your third report card. So, it's so this is the cool. three H boys at hunk at, at hunt, hike, hunt, harvest, hunt, hike, yep. harvest, right? Yeah. Yep. Yep. So they, uh, they're, they're going to help everybody out. They also, if you've already signed up for the pack out challenge, they have uh, assigned a six week workout program for you to help you build for this and help you uh, prepare. Um, Mountain tough has also included an elite membership for one year um to their programs so with just signing up you guys are getting more so the for instance the mountain tough course itself is hundreds of dollars you're getting that with your entry to the western hunt fest you're getting an onyx membership and you're getting a six-week program from the h3 boys which is wow. a lot of money just to sign up and help you guys get move forward with your elk uh elk hunting game and Again. then like Joel's going to, or uh, not Joel, <laughs> Joe's going to be teaching people um, how to elk call all throughout the event. He has his seminars, but then he's going to be doing separate stuff. I am going to be working with the kids one-on-one. -on -one. Um, anybody who wants to learn, I'm going to be teaching them how to elk call. Um, we're all going to be doing our best, educating everybody. So 
So yeah, everybody if, there is going to be providing education. So. If you've never made a sound on a diaphragm call, um, a diaphragm read, out call, um, and you don't have one, there'll be some there that at, there's going to be pen, plenty of people selling reads there. Um, get one. Mm -hmm. We will have you making your first sound. We will have you making a sound that you'll you'll feel like, hey, I have something to start with now. So if you've never done it, if you yeah. struggle with it, bring it. It's our challenge to be able to make that happen. So excited about that, right? Yeah, and then uh, so we'll have uh, Slayer calls, Elk Bros, and Mile High Note game calls there. Um, and then we'll have a bunch have of some Carlton calls with me as well. So we'll see how that works. Perfect. Out. Yeah. Yes. So you'll get to try a bunch of different calls. Um, you get to play with a bunch of different things. I will bring some alcohol swabs and I have one of every tube out there. So I'll bring a handful of tubes. So if you guys aren't afraid to <laughs> catch my cooties, you can try out a bunch of different, uh, <laughs> tubes and, and just have fun with it. So, yeah, and I'm going to bring some tubes, um, from Wapiti river. Um, and I'll also have some of Travis O'Shea's, uh, diaphragm calls. I'll have the Wapiti river calls there. Um, uh, another brother from another mother there, Travis O'Shea is a good friend of mine, uh, builds our calls for us. And uh, I, I'm, I can't wait to debut some of his stuff here in New Mexico, all the way from Canada. So uh, it, oh. yeah, this is going to be fun, man. I'm excited. Joe, I need you to get a, your hands on one of those tubes. I just saw a video of one where they're scraping with it. Uh -huh. It's got the, the little, uh, little rivets all over the outside of it. I don't know who makes it. I just saw a video of it the other day. We got to get our hands on one of those. Oh, just sounds to... good. <laughs> anyway, yeah, it was nice chatting with you. Yeah, you too, bud. Um, and uh, I just want to urge everybody, remember, you can go to westernhuntfestoneword.com, find out about this event, find out what events you have in your area as well. If you're living in Colorado, find out, you know, the Mountain Archery Fest are all over there. I know there's a lot of stuff happening here uh, in New Mexico. We have several events that are happening here. Uh, Utah, Wyoming, uh, oh man, um, uh, Beast Mode over in Wisconsin, you know, there's uh, some incredible things that are going on. Uh, in fact, Mountain Archer Fest has gone all the way to Georgia now this year. So it's crazy, huh? Yeah, I love it's, it. just, it's just super, super opportunity to go out, have fun, rub elbows, test your skill, whatever you do, keep preparing, keep believing and achieving, all right? We'll see you guys next time. Thanks, Jeffrey.